Let's turn our Bibles to Second Timothy. Second Smith. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter two, verse fifteen. Our famous study verse. Second Timothy, chapter two, verse fifteen. The title message is one word: study. Study. Study with the exclamation mark. You know, for the title of the message, study with the exclamation. You can put as many exclamation mark you want. Yeah, 10, 20, if how many that will move you. Study, study, study. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we first of all thank you for the marvelous salvation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away. Thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, whereby we are we are, uh, we are saved until the day of redemption. Thank you for King James Bible. Thank you for Bible being church. We ask you that you be with Pastor Jay, pray that you'll fill with the Holy Spirit, give him the liberty, power, and the authority from on high to declare your message unto us. Come with us, Lord God. Help us to change and become better Christians for you. Amen. Please keep the distractions and devil's attacks away from the service. And let all things that are said and done before your honor for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 The word study isn't associated with too much love, you know, this day and age. Or in the past, or any age. When people hear the word study, they usually get turned off by it. You ask any children, you ask any high school student, you ask any you know, college students. The word study is not their favorite word many times. There's always, you know, you know, odd ones out there. They just read their study, then do anything else, right? But there are very few and far in between. And when you ask people, do you like studying? Do you love studying? General reaction is that, no, you know, I've done my study through the schools. You know, I'm an adult. Why should I study? But... Bible says it's a command, study. You have to study the Word of God. There's no if and buts about it. It doesn't matter whether you want to do it or not, you have to study. Can you believe it? Every single new translation changed this verse, including people's favorite, New King James. By the way, New King James is not King James, okay? It's Devil's Bible. It's not the same. I don't know how easier can it get, right? Me and sister sitting there, we're not the same. We can't. We might have similarities here and there, but we're not the same. We have differences. King James Bible and every other Bible, there's differences. Then they're not the same. How can they, it's the same. It doesn't have the same meanings. It doesn't Come, have the right doctrines. If you hear it, if you see that every single translation changed this verse, that means that devil doesn't want the truth to be out there. Right. Devil doesn't want people to study the word of God. Right. And if you're not studying the word of God, then you are pleasing the devil for sure. Yes. And you're disobeying God's direct command. You're like, I don't know what to confess my sins about. There you go. You don't study, so you better confess your sins to the Lord about not studying the Word of God. They say, do your best. You know, that's what they say, right? Do your diligence. You know, I had a long work day, and I'm too tired, so my best today is to sleep. My best today is to, you know, just look at the Bible, not to open it, because, you know, I'm too tired. No, that was my best. But when you change the word of God like that, you know, people will find ways to justify their sin. 
You know why they do that? A lot of times, these revisers, even people listening to this message, like you don't study the Word of God. Why? Because it's not that important to you, and you don't want to be approved by God. At the end of the day, who do you want to be approved by the most? Do you want to be approved by man, fellow man? Do you want to be approved by your friends? Or do you want to be approved by God, right? It's always the opposite. You know, we Christians have to live opposite to the world. If your friends love talking about worldly things, right? They love talking about violence. They love talking about, you know, lust. They love talking about bitterness. They love talking about gossiping. They love talking about everything that's against the word of God. They love talking about this, you know, Hollywood, wicked love and everything, celebrities out there. All they talk about is sports and stuff. Then it just shows you, you are not going to be approved by God. You know, at the judgment seat of Christ, many people will be crying. Many people will be ashamed. Many people can't even lift up their head. Why? Because they weren't approved by God. Because why? Because they refused to study. I know it's hard, especially for adults. You know, if you didn't like study while you're growing up, it's going to be hard for you to study, you know, right now. But it doesn't matter. It's like if you're in an army, Marines, they tell you to do it. You don't do it. What's going to happen? You're going to be punished or you're going to be dishonorably discharged. But if you want to stay in that military service, you have to obey. And studying is command that you have to obey. If you haven't been studying the Word of God, and then we're going to go through how to study, if you haven't been studying the Word of God like you should have, then there's nothing that you could offer this lost world out there. Nothing. As Christians, you and I tend to get into this pitfall that the devil has set in place. What can world offer me? Very, very carnal Christian mind. Wicked mind. What can this world offer me? That's why you're always into worldly things. Even though you're a safe, born-again, Bible-believing Christian, King James only, dispensationalist, but your life is full of worldly things. Obviously, studying the Word of God is the last thing you want to do. All you want to do is, you know, get ahead in life. How you get ahead in life to you? It's like, okay, in the world, I have to get promoted. I have to make more money, right? I have to get married. I have to meet, you know, good people. You know, I got to have more friends. I got to have more fun, more pleasures in this world. That's why all you think about is, you know, what can this world offer me? When you have that kind of mindset, you'll never study the Word of God. Why would you? Because your mindset will be always about learning different things that you can advance your life and career and relationship in this world. Yeah. You know more about sports. You know more about celebrities. You know more about Hollywood. You know more about gossip. You know more about politics. You know more about the news. You know more about everything that's going on in your community than the Word of God. Right. I mean, something's wrong with you, right? Yes. I mean, something's wrong with me. Wow. Like, if people were to ask, right, what do you love talking about? What is your, you know, number one thing that you want to talk about? If it's not the Word of God, then, you know, you're something wrong. Amen. Right? If it's like a relationship, you and your wife, you and your husband, you guys are married. If someone tells you, besides from, you know, spiritual stuff, you know, church, word of God, you know, salvation, witnessing and stuff, you know, who do you love talking to most? Who do you love talking about the most? I mean, children's always there, okay? But children will grow up and they'll leave the house one day, or if not, I mean, they're still children. But you and your Spouse, you guys are together as a one now, right? If you're married, yes. that should be the person that you love talking about the most. That should be the person that you always think about. When this wicked Hollywood image comes into your head, and whenever there's an argument, dissension, distance come between you and your spouse, then you start thinking about stupid other stuff, right? Right. And then what happens, right? There's a cheating going on, infidelity, and all that stuff. When you're not faithful to Lord Jesus Christ, you're a cheater. Amen. As a bride of Jesus Christ. Yes. In the body of Jesus Christ. So whenever you're not studying, 
I mean, think about it as, you know, you're not listening to someone that who gave himself to you. You're a groom. You're listening to whom? The world, the flesh, and the devil. You know, women tend to say, you know, who I give my heart to is the person that I love. It's not about the physical relationship. It's about who has their heart, who has their mind, right? You can't just say, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't commit any adultery. No, I, didn't, I didn't fornicate. But in your heart, you already did. That's why Christians forget. It's not about necessarily your physical condition. It's always about your heart condition. If your heart is not right with the Lord, if you don't love him like you should, then forget about studying the word of God. You only, even if you do it, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Those are the people who actually love to study the word of God so that they could put other people down. They're the knowledge puffers up crowd. Proud, arrogant, haughty people. You study so that world can offer you all this accolade. World can give you this applause, fake applause too. They hate you for it. And then even amongst the brethren, man, you're like that person nobody want to be with. But, you know, human nature, they tend to congregate to similar people. That's why wicked people are easy to find wicked people, yeah. right? Good people, hard to find good people. There's some still out there, right? That's why within this church and this congregation, nobody's perfect. There's always going to be some kind of dissension going on out there. However, why should you be that person following or jumping into the same problem? I don't know, it's like this. Okay, there's a pit right in front of me. It's right in front of me. It's eight feet deep, right? If I fall, I'm going to get hurt. You know, why would I jump into it? But you know what? So many Christians love to just jump into it. Like, you know what? We only live one day, you know. It's a YOLO life, right? You only live once. So I just forget it. And I'm just going to just, you know, confess my sins afterwards. You, I'll tell you what, from my own experience, people who have that kind of mindset, like YOLO mindset, it is never a genuine repentance. Never. Like people who hear like, oh, yeah, you know, studying the Word of God is very important. And I'm so sorry that I didn't study the Lord. But many times, your heart doesn't turn 100%. It's that temporarily like Judas remorse, right? Yes. You feel bad because you got caught. Yes. How many people are always like that mindset? You're, man, you're not really sorry about your sin. You're not sorry about not studying the word of God. You're just sorry that you got caught. Right. You're sorry that God is telling you, is pointing it out to you, your heart, your life, that you don't study, so you better get right. They're like, oh, Lord, Why? You know, I've been having so much fun lately. You know, I'm, you know my, my work is going good. My relationship is going good. My health is doing well. Why'd you have to point that out to me? You know, I go out there street preach. I go out there and witness. I come to church on Sundays. You know, I listen. I take good notes, Lord. Why you got to point that out to me? Because I know it's true. Because it's true to me. Everybody, you don't study enough anyways, right? Amen. And especially if you don't study at all, yes. then that's a huge problem. Amen. That's a big sin. Then you, you got to change your mindset. Oh, man, I, I've been such a fool. I'm always like, man, I'm, I'm very pissed off. I get angry when I get caught. You better thank God that you got caught. Yes, sir. You should be thanking God that, Lord, thank you that you shed that light on me Amen. before I go further to my own destruction. Yes. You know, it's like little children. They don't know what's better. That's why, you know, when a child, when they're near this hot pot of water, you shield them. You protect them. You pull them away if they're about to touch it. Yes. They're very curious beings, right? 
Yes. But you're like, oh, you know, they need to experience this. You know, that's a stupid thing saying, right? You know, you're, everybody has to experience this. You got to learn from your mistake. If you don't have to learn from your mistake in the first place, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah? So, you go, oh, yeah. He, would you want your child to touch a boiling 200 degree hot water? No. You don't. Because it's not just that her for that second, it's they're going to have the scar for the rest of their life. Yes. And they might be disabled for the rest of their life. Yes. That's why the Lord's telling you and me all the time through the preaching. We have enough Bible study everywhere. Yeah. But this country and everywhere else is missing hard preaching. Preach. They don't want to hurt people's feeling. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, why would I want to hurt your feeling, right? I want to have more friends, right? But what's, how, who do I want to offend more? I always ask that question. Do I, wanna, do I wanna offend Lord Jesus Christ? Or do I wanna offend you for Lord Jesus Christ's sake? You know? Which at the end of the day is what's best for you. Yes. So you have to understand, okay, now I haven't studied like I should. Instead of complaining that I got caught, you know what? I'm going to change. You have to get right with the Lord. Amen. I mean, why and why people don't study, right? I mean, a few reasons, right? And the number one is that, you know, because of pride. Like, I don't need to know that, right? That's like their thing, you know? If, if a young child, for example, you know, comes up to you and they suddenly share some information or teach you some information, that's right. You never knew. Human instinct's like, ah, oh, man, this guy's a little kid. This girl's a little kid. I'm going to look like a dummy in front of this little person. So like your pride gets in the way. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. And then you go and study by yourself maybe, right? So that you could be better than your child. When it comes to studying, you can't have any pride. You can't. You got to get rid of your pride. Amen. You got to have the mindset just like a little child who continuously ask and learn and learn and learn. If someone feeds you new information, it doesn't matter if they're 90 year old, whether it's they're like five or six year old, you appreciate it and you learn. Amen. You continue to learn. Yes. Right? People who doesn't like to learn, they don't care. Right? Their, their pride gets in the way. Right? It's the opposite spectrum of people who wants to learn and show, their, show themselves and be arrogant. But this is the other side of it. You know, I don't need to learn. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. You know, so forget it. You know, you know, pastor, teacher, my husband, my wife, my children, they could teach me some stuff or try to share. I don't need it. You know, even if they tell me, it's just like going to one year and it's going to come out the other year. Right? You know, majority of the Christians are like that anyways. Right? When they listen to preaching, you know, the only reason they're here at church is to be at church. If that makes sense. Yes. Right? You're not here because of your heart. Because this is the best available places out there. Because I didn't kick that out of this church yet, so I'm going to stay at this church, best that I can do. Because other places, they don't even you know, preach the right word. But you know what? Even though I'm not going to follow, I'm not going to do anything about it, I'm just going to stay. You know, my friends here, my family is here, right? You know, I have, you know, I have to show that you know, I have some kind of, I don't know, standard. That's why many people, they come to church, they never study the word of God, they don't have right heart, so they don't know anything. I mean, that's sad, right? You know, it's like you ask them about, hey, what's the difference between book of Acts and every other book in the Bible? Uh, spelling's different. I'm not talking about spelling. What about doctrines, right? Like, what's the difference? I mean, do you, do you know any stories in the Old Testament? Can you even count the Word of God or recite the orders of the Word of God? I mean, if you don't go to minor prophets, forget it. You will never be able to be able to do, you know, Genesis to Revelation, right? I mean, shame on you. Shame on me. If I pick somebody out here who's been, who says I'm saved for many years, hey, Show to this our young people who's sitting behind you, in front of you. 
recite Genesis to Revelation. Like, oh, please don't pick me. Please don't pick me, right? Or like you just go to the table of content right now. You're like doing your best trying to memorize it, right? Well, what, how, what's the best acronym to do it, you know, right? I mean, it's, it's sad when you think about it. You memorize every other thing. You know when your sports team won, favorite team won, who was the starting lineup of that team, right? You know your favorite movie. You know who came out, what year it was made. You even know how much that movie made, right? You know like when this celebrity, you know, how many times they got divorced, right? How many times they got married, you know? It's like, you know, you know everything about every other useless stuff except the Word of God. I mean, how shameful are you? It's like you're saved from eternal lake of fire. God has given you eternal life. God has given you opportunity to be the light to this lost world out there, and you don't take it seriously. It's like, ah, it's okay. You know, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, people who say I'll do it tomorrow, they never do it. Yeah. Because I'm looking at myself. You know, you never do things that you're going to do it tomorrow. Unless, like, you know, you're going to lose your job. Unless you're going to lose that dollar associated with that, right? But if it's not associated to mighty dollar, you don't do it, right? Look at your kids. Do your chores. Okay, I'll do it tomorrow. Hey, how come you didn't do it? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, is that your answer going to be to the Lord? At the judgment? All your answers are going to be, I don't know. But you know you can't say that to the Lord. I mean, if you know Lord Jesus Christ, how he looks like, how he's going to be like, how his appearance is going to be like in Revelation chapter 1, there's no way you can give any type of excuse. Yeah. You're going to go back to Philippians, and you're going to say, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. You're going to be shivering. You know, you're going to be crying your eyes out, and you're going to be like, oh, man, just regret and regret and regret. How many of you guys are regretful right now? How many of you guys are really, you know, pricked in your heart because you haven't studied like you should have. If you have no feelings in you, you know, you're really backslidden. You're just backslidden. It doesn't matter. Just admit it. You know, I mean, admit it to God. Yes. You're just backslidden. If the word study does not hit you like it should, then you're backslidden. It's like Lord's command doesn't matter to you. Can you imagine? If you're a child, you tell your child, hey, eat your breakfast because it's good for you. And your child comes back at you, gives you that, you know, stupid, you know, no focus face. They're just like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Okay, dad. Okay, mom. It's not bothering me, right? How would you feel? You feel disrespected, right? Yes. You got to bring out that rod, right? Yes. But you don't feel good disciplining your children. You want a child who just obeys. And you want a child who obeys because they love you. But you put yourself in that shoes, that child's shoes. That's how you and I are. Almost every single day. The Lord's like, study. They're like, nah. I don't want to, Lord. Or like, I'll do it right before I go to sleep. And you just sleep. You wake up and you're like, Lord, I'm sorry I didn't study. That's not a real Repentance, because you got to do it over and over and over and over. Yeah. You always have to think. Stop thinking about what can, you know, world do for me. Think about what you could offer to this lost world out there. Think about what you can offer to your family, right? Think about what you can offer the Lord, right? Obviously, we trust in the Lord to do anything and everything, but... If you, you can't even offer yourself to the Lord as studying the Word of God, then you can't offer the Lord anything. That's why people should never raise your hand if I were to ask, how many of you guys can, you know, give up your life to the Lord? Man, very, very naive, you know, arrogant people raise their hand right away. I could die for the Lord right now. What happened to Peter, one of his disciples? He denied him three times, Right? And you and I are no better than Peter. So before you say that, before you get ahead of yourself, just do things that you're supposed to do in the first place. 
If you don't even do things you're supposed to do in the first place, forget about doing great and mighty things for God. That's why they say, you know, small steps will lead you to bigger steps. You got to do little things. But studying is not just a little thing. It will actually build you up to be a, you know, young man, you know, later on to be fathers of faith. You have to. And another one, why you don't study much, right? Because there's lack of movement in your life. Lazy people don't study. It's as simple as that. You know, lazy people just don't study, right? You'd rather sit, you'd rather, you know, lie down and just, you know, do your phones, watch TV. You have to have some kind of movement in your life, physical movement, right? Also, as Bible believers, you do have to, you know, take care of your body, do some exercise here and there, do some walking, right? You got to eat healthy. You got to do those things. Again, we're not fitness freaks out there, no. But we have a body of temple, temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's not your own. So you have to take care of it. Can you go out there and street preach? Can you go out there and preach the word of God? Can you go out there and witness? If you can't even walk, right? If you can't even talk right, you have to take care of it. And that's why people like military backgrounds. Because they're very disciplined. They just do it. You know, even if they don't want to do it, they just do it. I mentioned that in the past before. Some people, especially people who were in military, they make their bed when they wake up every day. It gives them a sense of accomplishment, and it's part of their life. I'm not saying that you and I have to make our bed every time we wake up, right? But that's the lifestyle that gives them discipline to do it. If you want to study the Word of God, you have to be disciplined. Yes. You have to set up a time each day, and you have to study. You know, without any distractions in the world, if you're most free at 9 p.m. in the evening, then set 9 p.m. to whatever, 9.30, 10 o'clock, and you just have to study the Word of God. It can't be, oh, when I feel like it, I'll do it. When do you ever feel like studying the Word of God? Right? Truly, when you have other competing priorities that's going on in your life. Right? So you have to set up a time. I mean, Daniel, David, Lord Jesus Christ, they always pray at a given time. Obviously, they prayed always, but they always set up a time. Early in the morning, in the noon time, in the evening, they just prayed. Right? I mean, I'm not asking you to be like them, right? There are certain religions who pray five times a day. They don't care. Yeah. They just do it. They stop whatever they're doing, and they do it, and you better not criticize them, right? Yeah. Or else you're going to get some lawsuits. They do it, and obviously they're doing it for the wrong reasons. They have wrong zeal, but they do it. Christians have no zeal at all. Well, that's the worst part, Like. Uh, when we study deep doctrines and stuff, you know, I like it. I appreciate people who really want to learn more. Because not everybody wants to learn. Because inside a church setting, just like in a classroom setting, say, say you are in a, I don't know, algebra class, right? And there are like 30 students. You think all 30 love studying algebra? And especially people don't like numbers. They hate it. But there's some who loves it. And they're the one who's going to do well in the class, and then they're going to do better in the you know, other classes. If you don't like studying the Word of God, even inside a church setting, forget it. You're never going to love studying the Word of God, and God's not going to give you the wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Don't be fooled like the worldly people out there. I'm so smart. I could just go through the Word of God, and then all the knowledge is going to come to me. You're a fool. This is not your word. This is not human beings' word. This is God's word. Amen. Yes. God will open the minds of people when, they, when their heart is right with the Lord. Yes. That's why Dr. Ruckman, God revealed most to Dr. Ruckman. He had the humble heart. People think he was a jerk. He had to be strong. 
But he wasn't a jerk. He stood for what's right. And then he continuously read and studied and studied the word of God. Yes. I mean, you and I are no better than him. No. You think you're good because you know some theological doctrines? As I prepare and to teach and stuff, I learn new things every time. Amen. Every single time, Lord reveals new things to me. Just because you graduate from Bible college, you think you're okay? No. You're not. You and I have this thing called human brain. Yes. It dies all the time. Yeah. Millions of cells just dies every single time. How are you going to keep it fresh? How are you going to keep it really alive? You have to move it. Just like you, know, you need movement in your life to stay healthy, Amen. you have to move your brain. Amen. You have to start studying the Word of God like you kind of, you know, when you study something for so long and so much, it consumes you. Mm -hmm. With that, let's get into then how to study the Word of God. Number one, you have to read. You have to read the scriptures. Yes. Don't just take out one word, study, and then you're like, I'm done. You know, I'm done for the day. No, you have to read. You literally have to read the scriptures. You know, there's Always part where you have to, you know, study the doctrines, you know, you have to study all those important things. But number one thing is you have to read. You have to read from Genesis to Revelation. You just have to read. That's why you have to set a time each day to read the Word of God. You have to. You can't just say, when I'm free, I'll read the Word of God. No, you read the Word of God at a set time. Even if I'm not free, I'm going to read the Word of God. Yes. You have to. Without that kind of dedication, how are you ever going to serve the Lord? Too many people are so fixated on themselves, they're always number one. If I don't feel good, I can't do it. You know? You're the most selfish person in the world. If, like, like the children, you know, our children, especially when they come to our church, they get disciplined to be a good Young, Christian, girls, and boys. And what's one thing that kids hate to do? Stay still, right? I mean, I was one of them. Like, you have to sit straight. You got to concentrate for 20 to 30 minutes. You know, preaching time, 40 plus minutes. It's hard, but you have to do it. Yes. Can you imagine you're in a military? Your sergeant, master sergeant tells you, you better stay still. Do not flinch, especially when Major is talking to the group. How many of them do you think is really flinching and, you know, playing with their hands, you know, playing with their hair, the little hair that they have, right? And then, you know, running around and stuff? No. They literally are robots just staying still. Yes. Because they respect the words that come out of the person. So that tells me. You can't even stay still for the word of God. You, you have no respect for the Lord. Right. You stay still when you're watching movies. Literally, like if someone moves around, you're like, stop moving. I'm trying to listen to what they're saying. But when it comes to the word of God, whoo. Yeah. Major of the Christians, so-called Bible believers, man, they can wait for service to the end fast. Like right now, it's like 10 something, 50 something. Man, I hope he doesn't go past 11 today, right? Well, that's all they think about, right? And then, I mean, if you're a kid, I kind of understand I've been there, right? You know, you know our, our service used to end, you know, I mean, faster, later, you know. And there is no winning combination. I'll tell you that, you know, as a pastor, someone's always going to say, why are you finishing so fast? Why are you finishing so late? You know, it doesn't matter, you know. If I care about what you thought, you know, I don't be here today, right? right? I mean, yeah. there could be one person here, and if the Lord has called me to continue to do it, I got to do it, yeah. right? Yeah. If it offends you, don't be, get out of here, right? Yes. You know, there's a lot of churches out there who will conform to your own liking. Right. There's next door right there, Pentecostals, right? There's some Catholics right there. There's Jehovah's Witness standing right there, right? There are Mormons riding their bicycles everywhere, right? Yeah. Just, just catch one of them. And then just, 
you know, be like, you know what? I, I'm going to join you. They would love you oh, yeah. to join them. And they'll never say anything to offend you. No. They want to keep you inside the church. We're different. Amen. We're not about numbers. We're about right heart. Even if it's small, who is going to follow the right doctrine yes. and going to be in the right ministry and serve the Lord that way? Yes. That's why, you know, you're not going to see every pew be filled on a regular basis, right? But does that make me sad? No. I mean, think about missionaries out there outside of this country. Like, brother, bring them at zero converts. Who's born, naturally born Japanese people? And he's been doing that for years and years and years. If he was looking at the numbers, he would have quit a long time ago. Right. You just plant the seed. God does the reaping. You just plant the seed. Amen. You just continue to plant the seed. So when it comes to studying, you've got to have some discipline. You've got to think about who's watching you, right? If you don't care, your children won't care. If you don't care, younger people won't care. So if you're older than anybody, except for, I think, our youngest ch children here, who's like five, three, everybody's older. Then someone is watching you, and you are responsible for their actions because of your testimony. Yes. Then you don't want to listen? Just just go to the room in the back because you're a bad example, right? It's better that you're not at the view of other people as you offend those brethren and little children. It's like, you know, I think one of the worst things that could ever happen to testimony time is that, you know, I did it because he did it. He's older than me. I did it, she did it because she's older than me. She's been saved longer than me, right? So don't blame me. I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, your decision is your own decision, but there's some truth to it. You're learning all this bad stuff from the people around, especially inside the church. Then how can they right, grow up to be a Bible-believing you know, young men and young women? So you're the cause, older ones. Your testimony is ruining young people. If you ever thought of that, you know, to your heart, then whatever you're doing inside the church, during service, outside the church, wherever you are, your attitude, your postures, your actions, your conversation, everything will change. And that really comes from study. If you don't study, you have no basis for it, right? When you study the Word of God, it will tell you what to do. Yes. It will give you answers in many, many different situations. Oh, I don't know what to do in this situation A. Oh, hey, Matthew talks about it. I don't know how to do it in this situation C. Oh, Old Testament talks about it, right? But yes. for many of you, you have no clue. That's why it's easy for you to sin. Right. Yeah. It's easy to deceive, you know, baby Christians. That's why when someone gets saved after we go door knocking, we find out that very next day, Jehovah's Witness or Mormons knocked on their door and they lose their faith. Just like that. But they're saved, thank God. Amen. But they don't ever grow. So they don't do anything for the Lord. Yeah. Why? Because if you don't study right away, like if Holy Spirit is, you know, pricking your heart to study and you don't study, what's going to happen? There's going to come situations in your life and you're going to fail, yes. right? Like, think about it. Say you're going through a hardship health-wise. What are you going to cling on to? Are you going to cling on to like all these false psychologists out there? Or are you going to cling on to some word of God? Word of God. Amen. When you're in an impossible situation, what are you going to cling on to? Are you going to start calling people or are you going to cling on to the Lord first? When you need to make right decisions, you need the word of God. And in order to make the right decision, you need to study the word of God. It has to be in you. So how to study? You have to read the scriptures. 
And number two, this is part that a lot of people don't do. That's why there are a lot of Bible collectors. You have to believe them. You have to believe every word that he says. If the Bible says you read what you sow, then you got to believe it. Yeah. Then you got to stop. <laughs> then it's going to stop you from sinning sometimes, right? I'm going to rip what I sow, whether it's good or bad. Man, okay, so I'm going to go to a bar today. Word of God says I'm going to reap what I sow. Nothing good's going to come out of it if I'm still going to do it. But at least you know you're going to one day reap that. Oh, yeah, you know. You know what? It's, uh, my spouses will never know it. So I'm just going to you know, have a one-night fling with somebody you know, in a different country. Different state, right? But Bible says you read what you sow. Yes. Eyes of the Lord are in every place. Amen. Amen. If you knew it, man, you'd be scared. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. You know, Word of God says I'm going to read what I sow. Uh oh. You know, I, mean, I fear the Lord because Lord, I mean, He's going to deal with people, oh, yeah. right? I mean, He's going to send someone to hell for our eternity, yes. even if they thought they were good people. This fearful God going to judge me as his child chastise me, word of God says it, you know, I'm not going to do it. Amen. If you truly believe the word of God, you're going to commit less sins. Yes. The reason that you're always full of bitterness, you're full of you know, hate, you're full of all this sinful nature is because you don't believe the word of God. You don't believe it. You just say it. You don't even read it. Even if you read it, some part says, okay, Love thy neighbor. You know, love your brother. You're like, no, I can't love that brother or sister. No. So I'll skip to the next verse, you know. Okay. No, pray always. I could do that. And I could pray always. Rejo <laughs> no, no, you know, I can't do that one. So that's why that's not right study. Amen. Right study is that you have to read and you have to believe. Yeah. And then thirdly, you have to meditate on them day and night, right? Those words should be poured over in you. All the time. What does that mean? It should be engulfing you. Word of God should be from your head to toe all the time. Like, uh, instead of, you know, daydreaming and thinking about stupid stuff, you know, you're thinking about Lord coming back, right? I want Lord to come back. Yes. You know, I want that crown of righteousness, Amen. right? You know, I want that other crown. I want, I want crown of rejoicing. Amen. Oh, yeah, you know, how can I lead that lost soul to Amen. the Lord, right? Yes. You know, man, I didn't know much about Catholic and Peter and, the, you know, those judgments, two compartments in hell. You know, I need to learn more yes. so that when I do have opportunity, I want to lead them to truth Amen. so that God could save them through me. Those are the type of thoughts that you should be meditating. You're like, oh, man, I'm going through the hardships. But, man, compared to David and Isaiah and Jeremiah, what they had to go through, yeah. oh, man, I'm nothing. You know, that's such an encouragement to me. Amen. Apostle Paul, you know, what he had to go through. Yes. But if you don't know the Word of God, if you don't read, believe, and you don't meditate on them, you'll never get encouragement from the Word of God. That's why you're always depressed. You know, Christians are most, how should I say, you know, Bible-believing Christians are one of the most, how should I say, uh, uh, what's the opposite of joyful, right? I don't want to be sad too much, but they're like most, you know, depressing, right? You have all this great knowledge, great doctrine, but you have no joy, right? Because you know why? Because first of all, you're arrogant, proud, and haughty. You're full of yourself, but you don't really study the Word of God like how you should study the Word of God, right? You read it. You meditate on it. But you don't believe it. So, so it's like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to. You don't know? You didn't know the doctrine? You're dumb, right? That's your reaction when you're dealing with your brother instead of trying to encourage them, right? Yes. And fourth thing, when you study, you have to make sure that you pray for God to reveal their meanings to you. Amen. That's one thing that people don't do. They read. They believe it, meditate it, but they don't ask God to reveal their meanings. You have to. Like right before you read your Bible, you have to say, God, please reveal their meanings to me. You know, give me that knowledge, right? If you don't ask, God's not going to give it to you. You know, our God is perfect God. He 
It's very methodical. You have to go through every single step. If you've been Christian for a little while, you know for sure that there are no shortcuts in Christian life. You have to go through every single step, right? And God's going to make sure that you go through every single step. Why? Because if you don't, you become very arrogant. Yeah. There's pride gets into you, and you're going to say, it wasn't God. It was me who did it. That's why God goes through every single step. That's why pray. It's simple. From sincere heart, Lord, please reveal the meanings of your to me as I read, you know, whatever you're reading that day. Yes. And number five, you have to claim his promises that he's going to do it. Bible has a lot of promises in it, right? You have to claim it, right? God said he'll supply your need. Claim it, right? right? You're still with the Holy Ghost, right? Holy Spirit is inside of you. You know, even if you're going through hardships and stuff, Holy Spirit can comfort you, right? Yeah. Claim it, right? Romans 8, 28, claim it. You have to claim it. And if you do that, and then lastly, you know, you have to study everything in the Word of God, right? When you're studying, don't pick and choose. Right. Study everything. A lot of you know New Testament very well. But how much do you know about Old Testament? How much do you know about minor prophets? How much do you know about everything before Matthew? You have to study every part of the Bible so that you know the doctrinal meetings from Genesis to Revelation. In conclusion, you want to be approved. You want to be an approved Christian workman. In order for that to happen, you have to study. And as you study, you're going to rightly divide the word of truth, right? That's how we teach that way here at our church. As you reflect on your Christian walk, think about how lightly you've taken studying the word of God. Think about how bad of a testimony you've been to other family members, younger people inside the church, outside the church, your attitude towards studying the word of God. Think about how much sin you've committed because you didn't know the word of God. You didn't believe it. You didn't meditate on them. Yes. But now you know Amen. it is essential as 2023 ends, Lord Terry's 2024 approaches, studying the word of God should be your top priority. Amen. You better set up time. <coughs> Every day you got to set up a time to study the word of God. Yes, sir. Not only read it, believe it, meditate it, know the meanings, ask for the meanings, and you got to do it. Amen. Then you kind of actually become a Christian workman that's approved All right. by God. That's wow, man. That's, that's, a, that's something that I would love, I would desire to hear from my Lord and Savior, yes. Jesus Christ. You, know, you took it seriously because you love me, because you know Studying the Word of God. It's a lot of times difference between a joyful Christian, miserable Christian, witnessing Christian, depressing Christians. It's someone that God will use or God won't use. Who would you rather be? Let's pray.